wakulima wote basi kutukaribisha kirasmi ningependa nitayarishe kwa makofi kumkaribisha procurement and manufacturing makofi kwa kutoka ministry um the CES wanna to to more the governors who have been who are representing all these farmers uh gathered gathered here today the chairman of uh, our dairy board and uh, the MD of our dairy board um senior county representatives and officials from all the counties that represent the farmers here good afternoon as i wait for a short video to be prepared um, about uh, brookside i would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to what i think is a very very special event many of you are not strangers to the brookside livestock breeders show that is that we have been holding uh, every 2 to 3 years many of you are not strangers to the dairy training courses that we hold out in so many counties every week training farmers on good agricultural practices and so many other engagements that we have with our dairy farmers this reward function today is just one of yet another of our many activities wengine wanauliza sasa hii reward system ni nini what is it others are saying kwani hii ni bonus kwani hii ni nini ambao tuna tunashughulikia tukiwa tukiwa brookside i think um, as 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 a pioneer in such a system as as a company i think it is um, important that um, i i i emphasize that this is in, in, indeed exactly that it is a reward and it is a reward to our thousands of dairy farmers uh, work wake up every morning kukamua ngombe na kutuletea maziwa kwa vituo zetu za za Brookside huko nje this reward system is a reward system that we put in place to reward the farmers for consistency in 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 milk production which would ultimately end in consistency in milk supply to uh, to, to 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 brookside and also uh, result in consistent milk supply to our market and our market at large both locally regionally and on several continents that we that we um, as, uh, sell and market milk to hii ni siku kubwa hii ni siku ya mavuno and in many kenyan traditions before we get to a harvest there are many ceremonies that are that are conducted because we are now at the stage of harvesting a lot of the hard work that we have done this is hard work that is represented by consistent milk production and soon to be quality milk production that we uh, want to embark on on a full scale very soon from now amongst so many other uh, activities siko ya mavuno is celebrated in many ways and today um, we have called you here for exactly that for that celebration our chief guest this reward system haina ubaguzi This reward system is rewarding everybody who is contracted to us. This reward system 
ukiwa member wa cooperative utafaulu ukiwa mkulima binafsi ambao unatuuzia maziwa hata kama ni kilo moja leo vile vile ni siku yako ya mavuno and hatu hatu atukuachi nyuma everybody is a beneficiary that signed up for this for this scheme and since we are all dairy farmers i think the big reward today um, is is that of a of ya, ya ngombe ambayo imeshazaa na imeshazaa uh, ndama ya kike this is what this is what we are we are we are celebrating today the birth of a of a of a of, of a female of a female calf i think um mine was really just to uh, welcome you give you a bit of a background on what this reward system is all about and also to uh, once again um, inform yourself bona waziri that uh, brookside assures all these farmers of guaranteed payments all the time that is why they are here today and this ceremony here is yet another demonstration of exactly that i think before i ask the uh, md of kenya dairy board to to come up here i would like to find out whether our video is ready chairman my chairman kenya dairy board probably you uh, need to wave chairman that's my chairman kenya dairy board the chief operating officer dairy Satai, uh, Deputy Governor, Nandarwa, all the representatives from the counties, the Director uh, Milk Procurement, uh, John uh, Kevy, and all, uh, all the management team from uh, Brookside, uh, distinguished farmers, Amujambo, good afternoon, Habarizenu. I'm really honored this afternoon to have joined you and this reward system uh, it is something that uh, as a board at uh, all the time when the farmer is motivated we are happy as kenya daily board to be part of it and we want to congratulate all the farmers who are going to receive their awards today for the good job and the contribution to the dairy sector uh, as you know kenya dairy board is a regulator we are mandated to regulate to promote and to develop the dairy sector in uh, Kenya. We focus mainly on improvement of quality and safety of the dairy produce. We set standards for the dairy produce, which is uh, applicable both at regional level and of course uh, nationally, uh, internationally. We also focus on areas that are not uh, traditional dairy uh, areas, like the ESSEN, and that's the areas that we're looking at. We also want to develop uh, and build capacity along the dairy value chain so that we can have positive impact and, of course, enhance consumption through promotion. And uh, recently, we've been promoting the school milk program, and we are happy that uh, Brookside has been supporting that initiative in order to uh, enhance consumption of milk. The other focus is, of course, stability of milk production. And this has been an area of challenge because as a country, we are rain fed dependent. And during uh, rain seasons, the production of milk is high. And uh, during dry spell, we have challenges. And we want to have consistency, which is good for the processor and is also good for the farmer. Uh, this industry continuously plays a very vibrant uh, role. And uh, its growth is estimated at 5% per annum. Uh, the production of milk is estimated at 5.2 billion liters uh, per annum. And out of this production, we project that uh, by 2030, the, uh, the estimated production of milk will stand at 12 billion liters. We hope that the farmers will support us in order to achieve this target. So let us support the growth of 5% annually. We acknowledge you as farmers, the good work that you are doing. I want to encourage you, I want to urge you 
to continue the good work to ensure that you increase the production of milk and the supply to our processors across the country. Currently, we have a total of uh, registered processors. They are 32 in number and they are growing. And uh, Brookside is one of the leading processors in the country. I want also that the installed capacity is at uh, 4.9 liter, uh, liters per, per day. However, the capacity is not fully utilized. So we encourage you farmers to produce more milk so that we can process more milk in the country. The sector is largely informal and 65% uh, of uh, marketed milk is traded informally, which of course raises issues of uh, quality and as a board we are very concerned in this area and we want to move the informal market to the formal in order to address the issues of challenges. And uh, one of the things that uh, we want the farmer to focus, because the farmers are well represented here coming across the country, we want to focus on issues of uh, good hygiene practices, issues of antibiotics, ensure that uh, you observe the withdrawal periods, formulate your own uh, feed, and if you purchase, ensure that it's of good quality so, so that we don't have issues of aflatoxin in our milk. Also issues of just general hygiene, cleaning of the milk parlors, issues of management of the animals so that we can be able to achieve good quality milk. Once we do that, our products will become more competitive, we will earn more as a farmer, we can even trade uh, in other areas. I want to appreciate the role played by the dairy, uh, Brookside Dairy in their capacity building and all the activities that they do to support the farmer. <coughs> They've been conducting elaborate training on issues of bulking and also we appreciate as dairy board uh, issues of testing milk. Uh, I know they do that in, from the farm gate before even they process milk it tested to ensure that it's of safe quality. In a biannual uh, survey that we conducted on quality, for a fact, and this is true, Brookside products meet and exceed the quality and safety standards and thus has a huge demand in the market. To spur this growth, we want you to continue to participate in these areas. As a board, as Kenya Dairy Board, we will continue developing policies, regulations, so that we can be able to streamline this uh, sector together to make it very competitive. We urge you not to just look at this business just like uh, any other casual thing, but a business. And we will support you through the policies and the regulations that we'll have in place. We'll also continue promoting the school milk programs. We'll co continue promoting issues of environment through reduction of greenhouse uh, gas emissions, usage of uh, biogas, and all these other organic fertilizer and ETZ. We want to appreciate this processor, Brookside, for having been able to support the farmer in issues of uh, stable farm gate pricing, consistency and efficiency in paying the farmers. So you need to clap for Brookside because you are being supported in issues of pricing. We are the, this period, we have been giving farmers the best prices and we've been consistent and farmers have been very, very happy. We encourage the farmers to be able to manage their cost of production and uh, we have communicated this through the various trainings that we do. I want to thank you and we celebrate you as farmers. I want to congratulate you again for, this, uh, for winning this award and I want to appreciate uh, Brookside for this noble initiative to overwarding uh, and motivating our farmers. Thank you very much and God bless you. <laughs>
Chairman of Kenya Dairy Board, Faiz, uh, Contracting Manager of Brookside Dairies, uh, all invited guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, farmers and everybody else, uh, good afternoon. Uh, trade plays a key role in this industry. And I think really that's why we invited Chris Kipto to come here because if we have our milk and we cannot sell our milk, then we are not in business. So I think I'll give Chris two or three minutes to tell us what's happening, particularly regarding if we finish the Tanzanian issue. Uh, Waziri, uh, Chairman, Wanda I think we, we, we've been talking a lot together. The Deputy Governors, uh, MD, Daily Board, and may I say all protocol of that. I'm Jambo. When I got uh, an invitation to come to this function, I felt, I think it, it was timely because uh, Waziri here has been leading our sector on the National Export Strategy. And uh, you may have seen in July this year we launched our export strategy. And uh, in that strategy we have called it National Export Development, so you underline the word development, and then promotion strategy. So we develop the products and promote. So all agricultural products uh, come from the agricultural sector. And in our trade, if you look at all the trade that we do, majority are from agriculture. So I said I would come, more so because, uh, especially with Tanzania, I have led bilateral meetings. Uh, trying to see, uh, to resolve challenges with that market. And all the time I have been given information by Taif, and of course from the Dairy Board, and uh, I think Sige also from KCC. So I, I just want to say that uh, as a ministry, we are working very hard to open up markets, both domestic and international trade. And we have three main functions, just to finish. First one is to open up markets for you. Second is to aggressively promote products into those markets. And number three, to ensure fair trade practices. That whatever we do, we do it in a fair way. So I am very happy and I want to, you to join me in congratulating Brookside because when I look at this map, this is map of Africa. And next week we are in, in Cairo for International Trade Fair focusing on Africa continental free trade area, which is opening a free trade. You can see that uh, Egypt, so Sudan, DRC, already Brookside is African. Can you clap for them? And Chairman was just telling me already he's in Malaysia and others. So we really congratulate you. And I just want to say that as a dairy sector, this is one of the focus. We have given a lot of emphasis and we have the EAC market. We have the Trapezoid free, free trade area which brings together Comesa, EAC and, and SADEC. We have the Africa continental free trade area. And recently, as I finished, in such as the president led us to China. And we were able to sign what is called sanitary and phytosanitary agreement, which opens up markets for plant and animal health products. And uh, so even soon, you should be able to be taking your products to China. And I think that's a market of 1.3 billion people. He, and you know, I must give credit to our president because he, he made sure we don't come back from China without having signed that agreement. And so now we will be knocking on the doors of farmers to ask you to produce the products and the regulator will have to make sure those products meet the, the market uh, requirements. With those many remarks, may I say thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, guests of honor, really I need not emphasize the importance of the dairy industry in this country. I think we've, we've talked over it so many years and what it contributes to the economy of this country in terms of GDP. We talk about 12 percent, but I think for me, according to certain studies done by Hillary, I think it's much more than that. I think it's up to 19 percent, but we still talk about 12 percent. What worries us uh, more so is uh, we talk about producing so much liters of milk, but so much of it doesn't get to the formal sector, and that is why really the Kenya Dairy Board is very key in ensuring that we ensure we increase our uh, 1.2 million liters, which is less 
right now it's maybe 650 liters of processed milk. How can we increase that so that we can get into the formal market and be able to sell our milk uh, to uh, all those various markets? Uh, the other thing to talk about the industry is you, we all know that this is the fastest growing industry in the agricultural sector. Uh, reports indicate that it is growing at about 5%. Uh, and so this is a sector that we really need to nurture and ensure that we, uh, uh, ensure that we have all the regulations and that can help this industry develop. One of the most important things that we often neglect is our breeding programs. We need to ensure that we assist our farmers to ensure that we breed our animals and get top-grade animals that can actually produce uh, milk that is enough for this country. Yesterday, when we were at the livestock show in Narok, we, uh, there was a cow that produces 60 liters. Uh, I know the others, even among Brookside, that produce that. But this was just a small-scale farmer. So it just tells you how much breeding can go towards improving uh, our breeds. And uh, the ministry, through the State Department of Livestock, has been distributing AI kits to the various counties, free of charge, to the, those that are qualified animal health assistants, to see that we improve on AI usage. The joke at the Maasai yesterday was, we need the exact bull. We don't want the bull in the Mutungi, but we're telling them the bull in the Mutungi is even better than the other bull, because we know where it has come from and we know it is history. So we need to really change the mindset of our people so that they understand that if we have good heifers, and heifers is another source of income. If you have good excess heifers and you sell your heifer, yesterday a heifer went for about 800,000, just one heifer. So it tells you, uh, you know, what the dairy industry is all about. Uh, we know that we have uh, programs that are geared towards assisting our dairy farmers to lower the cost of production. I know Margaret has talked about the cost of production, which is key, so that we don't always complain that why are processors paying us little milk. I think Kenya perhaps is one of the uh, countries that pays the highest in terms of milk. We may not know that, but you go to Europe and you'll know, you'll understand. So if we can reduce our cost of milk production to about 12 to 15 shillings, then we are in business. And we have done studies with one of our projects called the Smallholder Dairy Commercialization Program. And we've actually found out in nine counties that we did the studies that we can reduce the cost to less than 16 shillings. And then you are in business. Uh, the other thing that we really need to urge our farmers to take care of, and has been mentioned by Margaret, is a withdrawal period of the products that we use uh, for our, treating our animals, vaccinating our animals, and, you know, the, what we use to care for our animals. Uh, we recently created, and thank you to the, to the ministry, to the min, our minister, our CS, the Veterinary Medicines Directorate, which is actually now regulating the importation, the manufacture, and, you know, distribution of drugs, so that we actually regulate, because we have left the veterinary industry to uh, people who don't mind what drugs they use. You find a farmer walking to an agrovet and buying an antibiotic and going to treat that animal. He has not been told how he should treat it, how he should inject it, what would be the withdrawal period. So really, and that goes, of course, to the system. It goes through the milk. And we have antimicrobial resistance, which is now with us. And that is why we need to take care of that. So. We are educating our farmers also through the Kenya Day, uh, Veterinary Board. We are regulating the various uh, veterinary practitioners to see that we have people who can actually help the industry. So really, I think what Brookside is doing today is very good. Uh, it's it's um, motivating the farmers, showing the farmers that we are working together uh, by recognizing those farmers that have been able to supply milk to the processing, to the processors, and this actually goes a long way in showing that uh, the dairy industry uh, is recognized. And this occasion here today is one such uh, uh, you know, occasion. I really want to say uh, since the inception of Brookside, we've seen it evolve over the years. And it is an industry, I think uh, many people don't mention, but 
some of the equipment that they have here is only maybe second to maybe and some equipment in South Africa. So we have state of the heart equipment here, some of it which is underutilized because we don't have enough milk. But we hope that with, as we uh, ask our farmers to intensify their milk production, we should be able to get enough milk both for local con consumption and for exports. I will not dwell so much on the figures and so on because that will be dealt by the, uh, the guest of honor. And I think I'll only stop there by saying wakulima tushikana pamoja hii sector ya livestock ni sector ya muhimu sana katika nchi yetu na ni sector ambayo lazima tuiguze tuitunze tuangalie kwamba tunaipeleka mbele ili tusaidie uchumi ya nchi yetu na uchumi yetu uh, maziwa is the only uh, income in the agricultural sector that is like earning a salary you get your money at the end of every month and uh, we are sure that Brookside is paying. I will not tell you where I took my milk the other day. I have not been paid. <laughs> but that is the easiest way to get your cash flow. At the end of the month, you get your money. And so you can plan. You can plan ahead. And, and that is if you have consistent milk supply. So I'll stop there and say congratulations, farmers. Congratulations, Brookside, for this occasion. And we support you and we are with you in this. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Minister of Agriculture and Livestock, thank you so much. So if you want to be assured of consistent, efficient payment, Brookside is the place. As our executive chairman, Brookside Daily Limited. Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture, Livestock Fisheries and Irrigation, Honorable Mwangi Kunjuri, uh, the CAS, uh, Andrew Trimur, Permanent Secretary in the State Department for Trade, Dr. Chris Kipto, Deputy Governor's President, the Chairman and the Chief Executive of uh, Kenya Dairy Board. Chief Officers and Directors of uh, County Governance, Nawakuli Marote Hamudiangu. Kishikana Pomoja, I think uh, we can conquer everything as farmers, and I think the sky is the limit in terms of what we can do. And I think I want to really encourage everybody that we come together and we can conquer this industry. It is my honor and privilege uh, to welcome uh, you all to Brookside Dairy Limited today. Today we are honoring uh, our raw milk suppliers who have worked hard in their partnership with us through consistent supply of raw milk. These farmers who have attained excellence in the supply of the agreed uh, milk volumes, both in quantity and quality, over the past nine months. Waziri, in the month of April this year, we rolled out uh, a reward scheme that sought to encourage all our farmers to be consistent in the supply of milk, both in quality and quantity. Since then, we have been working closely with uh, these suppliers on the need to grow our volumes. Even as they delivered milk that met our, uh, met our stringent uh, quality parameters as outlined in our milk supply agreement, I am therefore very happy to announce that the farmers we shall honor here today have actually stuck to the letter and the spirit of this reward scheme and Brookside Dairy is delighted to parade them all here and to have them all here and we're very happy to have you here with us today as an example to farmers across the country. Waziri, I think uh, in the past uh, we have all heard about uh, bonuses in tier crops like uh, tea. This is something that is eagerly awaited by a lot of farmers. You get your regular check and also then at the end of the period you're also able to get a bonus which you're able to use in terms of investing uh, in uh, uh, your agricultural enterprise. As Brookside, this is another first and we are trying to introduce the same system 
even for milk, to basically encourage our farmers to be consistent, to encourage our farmers to be able to, be able to uh, increase both quantity and quality of milk. That way, Bonakito, and it's good to have you here today, uh, we always have functions where, as farmers, we come together. And uh, from a government point of view, the only people we have uh, is uh, representatives Waziri from uh, your Ministry of Agriculture. And today it is very good to see that trade is also here with us today because uh, agriculture, we have to change our thinking about agriculture. Agriculture is something that we need, like you said, uh, uh, Bonapiers, uh, to develop very seriously as something that can help this country and propel this country even in its international trade. Um, I think from a government point of view, uh, the government has done a lot, uh, even in terms of some of the trade missions that you are seeing uh, happening uh, recently. In markets, like was uh, PS, uh, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Principal Secretary said just now, like China, if we were able to produce, we can actually sell two times, three times, actually for even just China alone, I can even say a hundred times what we are producing today. And it actually, that is all income that comes back to the country, that comes back to the farmer, and that is income that comes back to everybody who is sitting with us here today. And this is actually very good to see that we are actually even trying to encourage, to show people that agriculture is a business, it is a thriving business, and it is a business that we all want to encourage and build in this country. But a minister, in spite of the uh, strides that we have realized over the uh, two and a half decades uh, um, of Brookside, um, the dairy industry, Brookside Dairy, remains committed to the transformation of dairy from a subsistence uh, undertaking, as I have just mentioned, to a fully fledged commercial enterprise. To this end, we continue to aggressively implement an extension services program that seeks to empower all our 160,000 farmers in Kenya. Our dairy training courses are held uh, in every corner of the country together with demonstration farms that we have established in key representative areas and they remain popular with the farmers as we seek to grow the daily volumes of milk supply to us. Needless to say, seasonality of milk production as a consequence of over-reliance on rain-fed agriculture remains an impediment to the full realization of gains in the dairy sector in the East African region. This explains why we continue to partner with farmers and farmers groups across the country to address the need for feed preservation so that milk production remains optimal throughout the year. I therefore try and challenge uh, farmers that we take advantage of our daily training courses and skills and practices learned at our demonstration farms to better their output of raw milk. We will continue to partner with farmers over, over the whole region in training in clean milk production, quality milk in items such as uh, antibiotics. Uh, we need to train people in terms of buying quality feeds um, to ensure that uh, what product that we are getting through the system is a good and high quality product. Brookside is also now aiming to even look at the next stage, which is actually not only to pay on consistency, but also to pay on quality. If farmers are able to bring in milk uh, that is of a high quality, higher butterfat standard, um, we are now exploring as to how we can partner with our farmers so that you produce better quality, you can even earn more money from your production and your hard work. And this we are very willing to uh, work together, to work on a formula as to how we can achieve this so everybody can be more and more encouraged to enter into this industry. Uh, so for the farmers, uh, whatever you can produce, we are willing to take and we are ready and willing. So the days that people used to find shortages uh, in um, uh, or lack of markets for the milk, Brookside is ready to take that milk and with the support of uh, people like uh, the Ministry of Trade and uh, through our own efforts, we are also consistently looking for additional markets as to where we can take uh, and this milk and where we can offload this milk for our farmers. I think uh, with those few words, again, I would just like to uh, congratulate all the farmers across the country 
and more so those who are present here today, who will be honoured for their consistent supply of raw milk uh, this year. To conclude, I think, uh, to all our farmers, uh, um, on a bit of a lighter note, I've heard of uh, days of uh, the tea bonus, uh, everyone used to call it uh, boom, I think it was. But I hope in the milk industry we will be a little bit more uh, level-headed and all this money will be put back into investing into our livestock industry and there will not be too much of a celebration from the boom coming out of uh, milk today. Asante Nisan and uh, God bless you and uh, let us continue to partner together with each other. Thank you very much. On uh, those few words, I think, uh, can I please ask uh, everybody to give a great round of applause to uh, the minister who has taken his time to be with us here today and we listen to his few words. What is it? very much uh, the executive chairman Brookside Daily, Mr. Moho Kenyatta, Chief Administrative Secretary, uh, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Fisheries Irrigation, Adi Tumur, PS Kipto, uh, the Chief Operation Officer, Brookside, Mr. Taib. Uh, Chairman KDB, Anthony Mutugi, Margaret Kibogi, the Managing Director of Kenya Dairy Board, Distinguished Farmers, Ladies and Gentlemen, Governors, thank you very much for coming. You can see Deputy Governors with us today, and the CECs from many of our counties. Before I read my speech, which I have really tried to simplify because I believe I'm dealing with farmers. I'm really excited to be here today. I've heard of what you have come here to do. For me, I thought it was just a, about uh, top performance, but I didn't know it's about bonus. <laughs> One advice I want to give you is that make sure next time you give bonus in January. Already you have given them an idea. <laughs> With the bonus and Christmas coming, I can assure you, uh, one percent will go to <laughs> what you are trying to advance. We are now already preparing. Uh, we are now fattening more goods in the villages as a result of this. It gives me great pleasure to be among you this morning to preside over the award ceremony to reading dairy farmers in recognition of their top performance in production and supply of raw milk to Brookside Daily. Daily continues to play a significant role in the society, economic development of our country and to our farmers in particular. The daily sector contributes 4% of the national GDP, 12% and 44% to agriculture and livestock GDP, respectively. Daily production starts at 5.2 billion liters per annum and is a source of livelihood to an estimated 1.8 million smallholder households. I note that last year, milk going through the formal sector totaled to 591 million liters which is a 10% drop from the previous year, 2016, attributed to a long spell of dry weather. This milk was from 31 licensed milk processors, 915 milk bars, and 734 milk dispensers. Ladies and gentlemen, the daily sector, well harnessed, will play a critical role towards the realization of the government big four agenda as follows. On food and nutrition security, dairy products provide the much needed human nutrition. Milk is a complete food in itself. 
by ministering through Kenya Dairy Board, is also sensitizing counties to adapt county school milk feeding programs at the ECD level, which is a devolved function. With a view of improving the nutrition status of our school going children, eight counties have already adopted the program. I would want to note with a precision the role played by Brookside Daily in donating milk to all public ECD centers in Nairobi. For one term, and their role in promoting the same in other schools in different parts of the country. I hope Rekitia will be included among us. <laughs> manufacturing, the issue of manufacturing, my ministry intends to increase the volume of processed milk by hundreds million liters annually, which is which will increase processing utilization capacity from the current 40 to 60 percent. I want to go back again about issue. Huh? Dairy sector. I say that dairy sector well harnessed will play a critical role towards the realization of the Big Four agenda. And it is important for us to note this because when we talk of before Big Four agenda, most of us do really do not understand that without agriculture, there is no Big Four agenda. And that is why I say from the beginning, I try to simplify my speech so that we can understand how important this sector is. And I started by food and nutrition security by saying milk itself is food. And it is also important for Kenyans to understand these issues, that with this production, now Kito will come in. That is how manufacturing will come in. I believe almost 90% of manufacturing will be done through agriculture. So that in manufacturing, my ministry intends to increase, I have said, from 100 milliliters annually, which will increase processing utilization capacity from the current 40% to 60%. Universal health care, improved nutrition from milk results to less exposure to milk bone and other diseases, thus reducing hospitalization and medical pills. Again, when we talk of um, health care, Anywhere in the world, where does it start? The question that we must answer is health preventive or is health curative? Which should take precedence of the other? Because if you ensure that your population is well fed, if you ensure that the milk we consume is safe, the vegetable we consume, the maize we harvest, that sector alone can bring down the cost of medical care in the country by almost 60% if you only take care of this issue. And therefore, it is important also to note where then do we even need to put more investment when we come to investing in the country. Affordable house, housing, improved incomes at household level, arising from data, we resort to more disposable incomes, and daily actors will therefore be able to invest in housing. Again, you talk of housing, it depends on where you are talking about it. If I live in a village with a hundred thousand, I have a house, and a very comfortable house. If I live in a lobby, at the same time, you can have the same building you see there, somebody will do it for 20 million, another one will do it for a hundred million. Same size, same everything, depending on what you put inside that house. And therefore, again, you cannot speak of a, a big four agenda. Yeah? You cannot talk of housing without ensuring that that farmer is strengthened. Because by the end of the day, every species in this country is at 80% of our GDP derived from our agriculture. And therefore, that is how important it is that we should put our might thinking, concentration to this sector. Having said this, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to note that there is still a huge and untapped potential in dairy. All of us have said so. The sector is faced with a number of challenges, key among them 
being productivity at farm level. The menstruative rate though, between 7 and 9 liters per cow. Per cow per day, again, is our desired target of over 15 liters per day. Agree, we can go to 60, but you see, a journey eh, must start with one step. Already, we are even at 3%. Today morning, I attended IVAD uh, meeting, where they are doing their monitoring and evaluation across of the year. And a young farmer came and was one of the speakers. And he said that he used to be a pickup driver in Akuru, but was delivering milk for farmers. And he became interested. Then he decided to go back home in Siaya. And when he reached home, his father had two cows, and each was producing three liters of milk. And the young man, having interacted with milk farmers, decided that he can improve those two cows. You can imagine him leaving his former employment in Akuru to go back home and join his father, who had two cows producing three liters each. The story went on that he also benefited from the program. And through that capacity building, he was able to improve the breed that they had. Today, his father was earning, if you can imagine, three liters. Yeah? How many Kenya shillings a day? Today, they are earning as a family 216,000 per month out of daily family. So you have a practical, yeah? because whatever you come here, you want to talk of so many big things that we can do. How can we help our farmers? How do we improve our, our animal feed? But studies are there, studies written, and you are practical. Yeah? You can be able to fish out. You can say this is a living example in this, this is another living example in this. That's a young man who gave his testimony today morning. Uh, we also experience seasonal, seasonality of production. When there is too much rainfall, we have a grass, and when it is dry, we have milk shortages. There are a lot of inefficiencies across the daily variation, particularly at the farm level, resulting to increased costs of production and processing. This begs the question then, what needs to be done to address these challenges. I will start by addressing the farmers because this is their day. Daily farming should not be undertaken as a make feel good activity. The farmer needs to take dairy as a commercial activity and as an undertaking that can generate good returns and improve livelihoods. This can be achieved through undertaking modern daily farming practices. Indeed, this is best shown by the farmers that we are giving awards today. They stood out because they chose to do things out of the norm. Feeding remains a challenge in daily farming. Indeed, concerns have been received as the quality and cost of animal feeds. Feeding constitutes about 80% of the total cost of milk production. To reduce on the cost of feeds and maintain quality, many farmers have started formulating home-based feed ratios. I would also, once again, urge farmers to conserve feeds during times of planting for use in times of shortage. The quality of our breeds still remains a challenge. For increased productivity, we need to improve on our breeds by increasing the uptake of AI services. Serving our cows with the traditional local bulls leads to inbreeding and reduced productivity. Again, I was surprised when I went for the uh, dairy farmers uh, uh, show in Meru. And as when I was, was trying to interrogate 
farmers on how they receive the, uh, the AI is that for you to be sad, you require a thousand, some one thousand five hundred. But from Kari, we are giving the same seed for 200 shillings. 200, but the farmer receives for 1,500. And so those are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. Why would you buy for 200 and you are selling for 1,500? Again, what is the value of that 1,000 shillings to that farmer? I want to assure you today, go to that uh, uh, small town up there, Mungedo. That's what we call it in Kikuyu. Eh? Then uh, the smallest village setting, uh, urban setting in the village. And loud that 20 uh, wazes there and ask them to give you a thousand shillings. Eh? How many will give you a thousand shillings? Even go further and ask them to give you 500 shillings. They will not be able to, pro to provide 500 shillings. So when you talk of 500 shillings as a businessman, yeah, if you look at how it impacts to that farmer down there, then you would realize how important it, it is. And if, in fact, even if it will need government intervention to ensure that those small things are done for our farmers. The saying goes that unity, that in unity is strength. I thus want to encourage dairy farmers to form farmers, groups and cooperatives. This will help them achieve economies of scale, access services and inputs at a lower price and improve on bargaining power. Many farmers have been swayed and enticed by the informal milk traders to sell milk to them as they are deemed to offer better prices. Correct milk from the farm and pay during correction. However, this is not sustainable as the traders have often disappeared with the farmers' money, leaving farmers at a financial loss. Farmers, please deliver your milk to certified and licensed milk dealers to afford such losses. Ladies and gentlemen, the processors, on the other hand, has a role in capacity building of farmers by offering training and extension services. This will lead to enhanced capacity of the farmer to deliver quality and safe produce to the processors. This question of extension there is nowhere in the world that a country can develop on issues of agriculture without proper extension. And this, because of devolution, we devolved some of these functions. But this is the high time we have to think on this again. Whereby we need a conference, we sit down with the governors, the CECs and the national government, and ask ourselves, really for the interest of this country, and there are some of things that we need to do together. Because extension is dead. And without extension, agriculture is dead. And that is full stop. I've been minister for the last eight months, agriculture. I have interacted. And all of us must agree that we have a challenge. Issues of extension. National government is no longer doing it. We have so much money in circulation of capacity building. But are we organized on the way we do capacity building? What are we targeting? What are the outcomes? What is the contribution of national government, our stakeholders, county governments? Because this is a question that must be addressed. We have to look at it. There is no way you talk of quality without extension. Because these farmers need to be reminded, why do we go to church every Sunday? Why do we pray four times Muslims every day? The same God. And we continue to sin every one day. We need to be reminded. And therefore the issue of extension again. There are some of these things that are, when we come to national forums, if there are any conferences that are about to be done, yeah? because when we are people want to change the constitution for this and that. But nobody is talking about that common farmer. Yeah? Why do we need these changes? Why are we not addressing those issues? Because by the end of the day, 
We dwell much on controversial issues, but those issues that are sensitive and of benefit to our people, we don't want to touch on them. And therefore, extension, we need even if it's a conference to address this issue. The farmer requires competitive and reliable payments, obvious new supplies, so that he can sustain his business. This is because the farmer is very price sensitive and would easily be enticed by competing prayers. I'm glad to note that Brookside Daily has been consistent in offering competitive prices which are paid on time. Ladies and gentlemen, to our support of the agriculture sector, the government has invested heavily in partnership with development partners in curing infrastructure across the milk uh, producing areas. The government targets to purchase a total of 315 milk coolers of 3,000 liters capacity each. 250 of these coolers are already in the country with 200 already installed. This is aimed at reducing for service losses currently starting at a high of 6%, as well enhance quality and safety of milk and milk products. Many county governments have also invested and continue to invest in curing facilities for farmers within their counties. To improve on quality of breeds, the government has continued to offer support to dairy farmers to improve productivity of their heads through establishment of four liquid nitrogen plants in Kabete, Eodret, Nero, and Sotik, and establishment of pool stations in Kabete and Kitari. This will bring down the cost of AI services as well as improve access to the same service. In order to create a conducive investment climate into daily, the government will continue to provide favorable policy and regulatory framework by continuously reviewing existing policies. The government, with the support of development partners, is undertaking a number of programs aimed at supporting daily development, particularly at the production level. Allow me Therefore, at this juncture, to congratulate Brookside Daily for fighting it fit to award its leading farmers. This will go a long way in motivating the award recipients as well as other farmers to work harder. And as I conclude, let me congratulate all those farmers who have gotten awards today but remind them that being, I repeat as I conclude, let me congratulate all those farmers who have gotten awards today. But remind them that being number one is easier than meaning number one. You thus need to dedicate your efforts so that you are back here again next year. Peer-to-peer -peer sharing is important. And so please share your experiences and knowledge with other farmers for the benefit of us all, the sector and the country as a whole. Lastly, there are questions that must be addressed. By the end of the day, we have so many sectors that are dealing with quality. When I listened to the chairman, he said, yes, you have got your bonus this time. But you want to look at bonus in not only in terms of consistency in supplying your milk to Brookside, but you're also going to look at issues of quantity and graduate issues of quality. That is key, quality and quantities. But again, much as Brookside is working so hard in terms of improving quality, because that is the area I want to address now, issues of quality. Are other players doing the same? Because even for us to access international markets, even for us to be profiled as a country that is sensitive to its people, we need all players to come up together. 
Because by the end of the day, you don't talk of good prices when you have some people who are praying cream, yeah, like Brookside, others dirty. We have some people who are producing animal feeds of high quality, competing with others who are producing rubbish. And you expect when I sell my bag, 90 like kg bag of animal feed, a 200 shillings, to compete with somebody selling the same, in quotes, bag of eh, animal feed for 100. This guy has not done anything. He just opened a factory and he's producing trash and selling to the farmers. Again, we are asking farmers to be careful. How will a farmer get knowledge to know that this guy is selling trash? And therefore, and also in other fields, we have said today, you inject animal in the morning and milk in the afternoon. The same day where we go and spray our vegetables and then they fetch the market in the afternoon. That alone is feeding Kenyans with poison. And then every day Kenyans are being fed of poison. And still we have departments that are supposed to deal with the issues of safety. But if you look at it, Margaret will only be the one se sector. We have cabins dealing with that. Veterinary dealing with this. Uh, health, uh, Minister of Health dealing with that. It is a high time that we ask ourselves a simple question. How many Kenyans are dying daily because of being fed by pesticides? How many Kenyans are dying today because of mismanagement of these sectors. Because true to it, there is a cow being injected now, and that cow will be milked in the evening. Right now, as we speak, there are vegetables that are being sprayed somewhere, and they will be in the market tonight. How many Kenyans are dying of cancer related diseases? How many are dying of diabetes, hypertension, disease related on what you feed on? If this government was able to observe that 3,000 Kenyans are dying annually through the roads and establish the National Transport Safety Authority, what would stop us from establishing National Food Safety Authority? How many lives are we going to save? And therefore, this is a discussion that we have, and I can assure you soon, we are consulting as a government and this must be stopped. We must come up with the National Food Safety Authority to save our people. So that you must pray by the rule. And you can be able to follow and know who is feeding Kenyans with poison. That you know if you buy vegetables that you are not very sure of, we shall get you at your coma. That if you think you are going to hook milk, that you can sell Kenyans, eh? The and what? Eh? Antibiotics. We shall catch up with you. And therefore, this is one of the areas we are discussing seriously, and this must happen. It is the only way we shall regulate this sector and other sectors in the country. Na kwa hivyo ni ya muhimu saidi kushikana pamoja. Kwa zababu wakati tunazugumuzia manene ya maziwa na ukurima dani ya Kenya, tunazugumuzia mwanaishi wa kawaida. Na wakati tunazugumuza na nini, Najua nyinyi ni vile tu mko viongozi ya zile cooperatives zenu. Lakini nyinyi huko mashinani ni wakulima. Leo mmejaribu mmepiga suti mzuri, lakini kesho ukiwakuta hawa utawakuta chini pale wakikamua ngombe. Utawakuta wakikatakata majani kwa zile ngombe zao. Hawa wanajua vile wanaumizwa na bei kiwa baya. Wanajua vile wanaumizwa na wala watu wananunua maziwa yao, wanasema wananunua bei rahisi, lakini wananunua dawa moja ya 20 liters anaenda na ongezea 10 liters anauza maziwa yake na hizi kwa sababu wewe ukipeleka Brookside unapeleka quality maziwa ambayo ulikamua kwa ngombe yako na umeangalia wewe unapelekea Brookside lakini huyo ananunua kwa mlango hapeleki Brookside mimi mwenyewe nadanganywa atinanunua maziwa bei rahisi eh huda amenunua amenunua kwa kwa bei kali kwa mkulima kwa, kwa nyumba yake lakini anauza bei rahisi huko nje Wewe jiuliza ni biashara gani hiyo? Alikuja kanunua maziwa 30 shillings. Na ile maziwa anaenda anauza kwa kiosk 25 shillings. Na sisi hatujiulizi kwa hiyo jamani magic gani anacheza. Kwa sababu yeye akinunua maziwa yako lita 2 
amenunua kwa 6 shillings. Kabla maziwa ifike kwa kwa nini kwa kiosk imekuwa when they put magic on the road. From 2 liters inakuwa 4 liters. Na wewe unauziwa kwa kiosk unaendelea kuuzia wengine. Ile maziwa yako anatoa kwako, anatoa ikiwa 2 liters, anaenda anaongezea mambo mengine kwa barabara, eh? Siku na dawa inaongezewa, kilimo inaongezewa, unaona bado maziwa iko sawa. Ukishamuja maziwa unasema hizi ngombe siku hizi ni za grade hata zinatoa pata kwa maziwa. Eh? Manaka ile cream inakuwa yellow. And those are some of the things that you must come to, uh, to learn. And that is why I say information is so important. Because Kenyans must understand. Because it's simple. If you buy milk, upereke kwa jiko ushemushe. Hii maziwa ukiweka ikipoa, unaangaria ile cream yake. It will tell you. After the milk uh, kunusa, ukikunya unasikia. Lakini wa Kenya, we have been taken for a life. That is why I'm saying, the only way to curb this, we have to get national food safety authority. Situashi hapo jameni. Si mutaidea kulima kwa gugu. Na tukutana huko machinani mimi na Margaret, tukakua tukiwa temberea, tumekua tukifanya hivyo, baka watu wa fetinari, tukakua tukiwa temberea, mwaka upe keyake, laisi ya ditoa serikali, ditoa mitungi ya AI, tukapeana buri, the other day, hapo kirinyaga, doba, tulipeana 1,600, ish worth 50,000, and we gave for free. We gave for free. So we are supporting the industry. Tunaweza ogea kutoka azubui, mwombe zitoke, zirudi jioni, na kini yo siyo vaida, vaida nile tumeshika rea, na tuwedere kuongezea bonus. Sidi oye? Taza hata nini kisikia kuna bonus, naweza vikiria kama mazua naweza kabili. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much. All right, we've heard, we've been here. And now it's time for us to experience the farmers not getting trophies, no, hard cash. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Waswahili wanasema tano kwa moja kwa moja. Ka 22,911. Shekhar Dali. Asante sana. Well done, well done. Chekorir Sali Kirui kutoka Bomet. Aya, tuende mungine. Naomba. Asante sana tumpigie KB Saidia. Asante sana. Thank you so much. The next award will be given by KDB Chair. KDB Makofi Out of Dali. One about 54,779 shillings. Kutoka huwa singishu. na KDB Chair. Na watatu wa kutufungia Makofia FIBA Holdings Limited Makofia Kitaya Out of Dali Ningependa Deputy Governor Nyandarwa County Ujebele Kutusaidia 89,789 shillings Makofi kwa FIBA Holdings Limited Kutoka Kirinyaga Asante sana. Sasa tunataka tuende moja kwa moja. The next one is uh, Traders. Naomba Frederick Mutwiri Mutea makofi yake tafadhali aje mbio mbio. Mwihoti Daily Form mbio mbio. Na Isaac Njenga Kinyanjui Jo mbio mbio. Na nikependa ni mwite CAS Dakari Naomba uje mbele Kutusaidie kumpa Frederick Mutwiri Mutea Ambaye anakwenda nyubani Na 614,384 shillings Makofi ya kitabadhani Frederick 
mutweri mute na wapili naomba daktari uwe pale pale kumpa mwihoti dairy farm representative wa kutoka nyandarwa wanakwenda nyumbani na 2,456,067 shillings and 70 cents Makofi yake Kutoka nyandarwa Makofi ya watafadhali nyingine Alabu tunataka tufunge Wana PS, daktari Kipto naomba uje Na uje huyu ambaye atakuenda nyumbani
mmoja na mwenyekiti Kenyata ili muwape hawa wawili wa juu kabisa farmers groups category Next online ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for Nyahururu Dairy Self Help Group Cooperative 
Union Limited, well done! Keep it up! 13 million, 900,000, well done! That's it! Tunaweza kuketi chini, wanahabari wote mpige picha, mardadi, mardadi kabisa! Asante sa... Ladies and gentlemen, I have got a small task to do here, but a very important task, and that is to really give a vote of thanks uh, to everybody who has managed to find time to be at this very important function today. And I would like to start with you, uh, our chief guest, Honorable Kionjori. I think your message, your quality, wakulima uh, and as a company, I can assure you, we are at the forefront. Na tutafanya juu chini so as to support and ensure that the Kenyan consumer benefits from good quality milk. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Kiyojori. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank also uh, our executive chairman. Without his uh, leadership, ile leadership ametupatia kwa hii kampuni. Hii malipo ambao tunafanya leo and that we have made for the last 25 years would not have been possible. So I would also like to take this opportunity, this rare opportunity, ya kumurudishia shukran. In addition, Yes, uh, Dr. Kipto, your message was very clear in terms of the importance of trade. Um, if the, our chief guest ministry is able to, uh, once the ministry is able to excel, you will take over from there. Kwa hivo, umekata jie. It is for us now ku Thank you very much for your message. Our CES, uh, Dr. Tuimur, I think your message was loud and clear. Uh, quality and quantity. Ni muhimu sana ikiwa hii biashara ya maziwa itasonga mbele. Thank you very much for your, for your message. Our chairman of Kenya Dairy Board and uh, the MD, thank you very much for your presence and time here today. Our deputy governors from Nandi, Nyandarwa, thank you for sparing time to, to come and be with your farmers today. I think ikiwa wakulima wana maswali yote ambao wangiapendelea kukuuliza, sasa wamecha muona and they will be able now to direct whatever issues they may have uh, regarding dairy farming. Sababu hiyo ndiyo biyachara yetu. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's also important to recognize the Director of Livestock, Bona Kiptarus. Thank you, Sababu ya Kumpatia, our Waziri. All the support and the ministry with regard to dairy farming, Asante Sana. Um, I would also like to thank um, all the county representatives, the CECs who are able to make it here today the uh, senior operating officers within the ministry and other officials of of the counties asante nisana kuanasi